uh, back again. I'd like to welcome welcome all listeners again. Uh, this is now the next. We're at page thirty-two. Now in this session, I hope to get through uh, six uh, six pages or so. Um, again, I apologise for the uh, equipment here. It's it's an amateur bit of equipment here I have in front of me. Um, listening over the last section there was just some coughs coming through I'm still trying to shake a cold as they say in Ireland here and I will try and avoid that but I still haven't got rid of my cold but anyways whatever um so we're up to um okay let me just read the last paragraph we went through she never let them in he cried again through his laughter as he stamped on gated feet over the gravel of the path that's why, that's why, okay, on his wide shoulders to the checker wood, uh, sorry, the checker work of leaves, the sun flung spangles, dancing kinds, the little balls of water on the leaves that we described. And uh, the last session, uh, just visualize them coming down, just absolutely incredible writing by from Joyce again. So, uh, um, off to the next, start to the next section. Now, as I said before, it would be a good idea if listeners could read ahead, you know, six pages. And you know, then um, n- uh, if listening to me, um, they might be thrown completely off, <laughs> or uh, you know, they can pick up things from me and so on and so forth. Now I have read through the next six pages or so, uh, twice at least, and I do have to admit it is um, it is difficult, no doubt about it, and it's probably even it's probably even more difficult to explain if that makes sense um, it, I know it doesn't make sense but um, we'll give it a go anyways as I say um, now it's, it's late here at night it's about half nine um, I'm actually recording this in my mother's house in uh, my home um, whole vill- home village of Monavay and I'm uh, just coming in there I was outside and looking at um, looking over the lights and you know, uh, the pubs, Kelly's pub across the road here, and the Woodside Lounge pub. Um, the other end of the village, then we have McGann's pub, and also French's Disco, and and Morton's pub, of course, in the corner. Um, uh, hopefully later on, I'm going to fre- f- uh, frequent uh, all four pubs and have you know one or two drinks in each one and meet all my all my uh, friends and my one of here. Um, anybody ever passing through, drop in and see us here in Monavay. We'd be delighted to see anybody. Um, so to the book anyways. Um, in electability modality of the visible, at least that if no more, thought through my eyes. Signature of all things I am here to read. Sea spawn and sea rack, the nearing tide, that rusty boot, snot green, blue silver, rust colour signs, limits of the diaphragm, but he adds in bodies, there, then he was aware of them, then he was aware of them, bodies before of them, coloured, how, by knocking his sconce against them, sure, go easy, bald he was, and a millionaire, maestro de colour, chi sano, uh, you can visualise Jice, um, Surely chuckling after putting that in there. Limit of the diaphragm in. Why in? Diaphragm. Ad e fin. Um, probably pronunciation is off there. If you can put your five fingers through it, it is a gate. If not, a door. Shut your eyes and see. Now, any listeners, do you, uh, you understand what's going on there? Now, I'm sure that there's a lot of Jice connoisseurs that do understand that. Um... Jai's connoisseurs. Now that's something we'll have to get out there. All Jai's followers. Um, yes, Jai's connoisseurs. That's Jai's deserves a phrase like that. Um, anyways. Okay, the next. I just want to read the next line or two. Stephen closed his eyes to hear his boots crush, crackling, rack and shells. You are walking through it. How so, mirror? I am a stride at a time, a very short space of time, true, very short times of space, five, six, 
the neck hind under exactly and that is the inequity modality of the audible um let's go back reading all that again that sounds very confusing um no doubt it it is confusing but it's really not that if um here let me try and explain that as best as i see it right first line going back reading again in electric modality of the visible at least that if no more uh thought through my eyes that's basically what that is there it's visualize a person you know with your eyes open and you're looking around what do you see that's what you see thought through your eyes it's what you see and what your eye what you see and wherever you are now and looking around you know, what i see now a computer screen in front of me and a book in front of me and you know uh, so on and so forth actually a cup of tea there um pain in my hand so it's what i see it's what my eyes is taking in that's basically all that means really and then signature of all things i'm here to read signature of all things i'm here you know it's like you're reading these things uh, as you see them now in this case it's stephen de dallas that's here at the moment uh so stephen de dallas um sea spawn and sea wreck He's walking along, he's wa Stephen de Dallas here is walking along uh, the beach or by the sea. And this is what he sees. He sees sea spawn. He's uh, and also Stephen de Dallas is thinking. This is what, St these are all, what, what I read so far are all the thoughts that Stephen de Dallas is thinking in his mind. And Joyce has put on paper. It's like anybody, you know, as I said before, in any one minute you think you know five ten a hundred thoughts and whatever them thoughts are if you just wrote them down on paper um you know must put the dog out make a cup of tea you know uh turn off the television if you just wrote all them things down um this is what's going on here really and it's stephen that is thinking and joyce has put stephen that is thoughts on paper um i think this was referred to um when they say uh Joyce is the famous saying about Joyce, um the oh I can't I can't think of it at the moment. Signature of all things, I am here to read. This is Stephen Dallas thinking. Uh, and then he sees sea spawn. I see sea spawn, he sees sea wreck, the nearing tide coming in close to his feet probably. That rusty boat. He sees a rusty boat by the beach. It's not green, the sea is green, blue silver, that's something else. Um, rust. He sees rust color signs. Now uh, he probably sees one or two signs uh, with rust on them. Rust on them beside the beach. Limits of the diaphane. Now, bush he adds in bodies. Then he was aware of them bodies before of them colored. Now he's thinking. Now he's thinking about the sea. He's thinking about the sea, being like uh, he's visualizing the sea breathing. Now when the tide comes in, he's breathing in or he's breathing out whatever and when the tide goes out he's breathing in so that's the way he's thinking here limits of the tide he's visualizing or he's thinking that the uh, sea is breathing in and out so think about the sea coming in it's breathing out it go the sea, sea goes out a wave goes out or whatever it's breathing um it's breathing in and so you know back in the tide in and out it's like breathing so that's what he refers that's the way he's thinking here but he adds in bodies. He's on about to see adds in bodies. You know, like people getting drowned. Like the person we re read about in the first 20 pages. Um, that's what he's kind of thinking about there. Then he was aware of them bodies before of them. Now he's thinking about how does the sea know this is this body is body is there? Or people have drowned. Colored. How does it, he's thinking? How does the sea know that? What color this person is? White, black, yellow, whatever. How? And then he said, then he's thinking, well, by knocking his sconce against them. I think sconce, what does sconce mean in this sense? Um, defensive, or some kind of a defensive, uh, defensive work that defends a mountain, something like that, or uh, something along them, along them lines. Uh, he's more the same, but if the sea is knocking against the body, then it can kind of figure out what, what kind of a body it is in it, and so on. Um, go easy. He'd more say, see, go easy. Bald he was. The person that died was bald. And a millionaire. Maestro de color. Chi seno. 
this is the figure. The, he's more or less thinking the uh, C has figured out what the person was bald and he was a millionaire. Limit of the diaphragm in. Why in? Diaphragm. At B, fan, whatever that word means. And then he's, he thinks, if you can put your five fingers through it, it is a gate. If not, a door. Shut your eyes and see. Now he's kind of thinking, well, how does the sea know if it's a gate is there in the sea or is it a door? And he's kind of <laughs> thinking, well, just imagine a gate and the water spills through between the bears. Okay, he said the sea would know then it's a gate. If it can't do that, it's a door. Shut your eyes and see. That's kind of what he's thinking there. Um, next line. Stephen closed his eyes to hear his boots crush, crackling, crack and shells. So Stephen did that. He's closed his eyes now. And he's, you know, walking along the shore. And, you know, the shells under his feet. You are walking through it. How somewhere I am astride at a time. Um, that's, you know. A very short space of time through very short times of space. He's just thinking there, these are his thoughts. Five, six, the neck and dander, exactly. And that is the uh, neck modality of the audible. Open your eyes. Now he's Stephen Dallas is thinking, he's his eyes closed and he said, Open my eyes, open your eyes. I, he's more thinking, I should open my eyes. No, Jesus, I'm not, no, I won't. And then he's thinking, if I fell over a cliff that beetles over his base, fell through the Nepenander ineluctably. So then he's thinking, if I fell over the, if I, he's, he's actually, his, his eyes closed now and he's saying, if he walked over a cliff, you know, that's all that's going on there. And then he's thinking, I'm saying, I am getting on, I am getting on nicely in the dark, more or less with my eyes closed. My S sword hangs at my side. My S sword hangs at my side. Remember the 20 pages we read, the ash plant branch of his tree thinks he's walking stick it hangs at my side still he still got it then he's thinking tap with it now he's thinking about his uh, ash plant walking stick tap with it yeah you tap with it he's thinking about blind people who tap with it they do tap with it he's thinking tap with it they do blind people would tap with it my two feet in his boots he's more than saying now his eyes are closed he's visualizing you know how 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 what blind people are, are like my two feet in his boots. He's more or less saying, I'm like a blind person now. My two feet in his boots are at the end of his legs. Nepenander, whatever that word means, sounds solid, made by the mallet of Los Dimerangos. Uh, am I walking into eternity along Sandemont Strand? This is what he's thinking. He's walking uh Strand, now we know it's called Sandemont Strand. And crush, crack, crick. Click, click. This is he's walking through these shells and stones on the beach. This is the sounds they make. Wild sea money. <laughs> Good lime Joyce. Wild sea money is referring to the shells as wild sea money. Dominina G C Kins the Met. Eh, won't you condescend him out? Medal and the mayor. So he just said that out, that's all. And now he's thinking again. Uh, rhythms begin, you see, I hear. A catalytic tetrameter of imms marching, no a gallop decline the mirror. Now he's thinking about that he's thinking about the tide. It's like it's like uh, uh how would I describe this at all? I said it's this is hard, <laughs> actually hard to describe. It's the part of a verse, a catalog what's the other word? tetrameter, a verse of four feet, uh the other word imms a foot of two syllables. He's kind of thinking the tide is like this. It's the rhythm of the tide in and out. Uh, and marching. It's almost marching in. No a gallop. Decline the mare. And sometimes the gallops in. Like this uh, wave gallops in like quickly. And then he's thinking. Open your eyes now. He's thinking. Will I open my eyes? Because they're still closed. And then he thinks. I will. And then he thinks. One moment. No not yet. Kind of. Has all, and then he's thinking, has all vanished, has all vanished since. Has everything vanished since my eyes were open before? If I open and am forever in the black, at a fan, <laughs> I am very bad pronouncing words, I need some help. If I open and am forever in the black, at a fan, um, if, if I open and am forever in the black, 
It more than ever opened my eyes and he can't see. Basta. I think uh, basta is more than it's like a kind of a crossword. I will see if I can see. Uh, the humor there. See now. See now, there all the time without you. So you must have opened his eyes. See now, there all the time without you. So everything is still there all around him without him. And ever shall be, everything and ever shall be, world without in the men. Um, um, I, you know, Jace is maybe, Jace could be giving God a compliment here, who knows. <laughs> um, they came down the steps from, from Leahy's Terrace prudently. Franz Zimmer and down the shelving shore, flabbily their splayed feet sinking in the silted sand. Like me, like Algy, coming down to her mighty mother. Number one swung lordly her midwife's bag, the other gamp poked in the beach. From the liberties out for the day, Mrs. Florence McCabe, relic of the late Patrick McCabe, deeply lamented of Bride Street. One of her sister lugged me squealing into life, creation from nothing. What has she in the bag? A misbirth with a travelling neighbour called Hushed and Ruddy Wool. The cords of all link back, strand twinning cables of all flesh. That is why, mystic months, will you be as gods? Gaze in your um, omphalos. Hello, Kinch here. Put me, put me on to Edenville. Uh, Aleph, Alpha, not, not, not one. Uh, just one second now here. Um, yes, so just back again. I want to read that over that again. It sounds a bit confusing, but it's really not. Okay, see now, there all the time a doubt, and never shall be a world without end of So now he's opened his eyes. Then, we're starting here again. They come down the steps, steps from Leahy's turns prudently. So Stephen de Dallas is looking in the distance, and he sees, he sees, he sees either one or two people. They are actually more, it's more than one. They come down the steps from Lee's terrace pony. So he sees possibly two people in the distance. They come down the steps. They come down the steps from Lee's terrace towards the sea. Fort Simmerman. And down the shelving shore, flabbily, their splayed feet sinking. And down. So these two people have come down and their flayed feet sinking. Great right and drive. In the silted sand. Like me, like algae. Like me, like Ali, coming down to her mighty mother, which is the sea. Number one swung lordly her midwife's bag. Number one. N number one means the, f the first person he sees. It's po possibly two people. So he said, number one, the first person swung lordly her midwife's bag. The other scamp, which is an umbrella, I think. The other scamp poked in the beach. So the other person prodded her umbrella in the beach. Great image from Joyce again. From the Liberties out for the day. From the Liberties. Stephen Dallas is thinking these two people are from the Liberties. The Liberties uh, is a part of Dublin. They're from the Liberties. They're out for the day. They're out for the day. They're out, for out and about for the day. Mrs. Florence McCabe. That's the name of one of the per people. Fl one of them is called Mrs. Florence McCabe. Relic of the late Pert McCabe. That would be her husband. Deeply lamented. He's died. Of Bright Street. That's one of the people. One of her sister, one of her sisterhood, lugged me squealing into birth. So this woman's sister um, was a midwife, obviously, and uh, was the midwife pulled me squeal, uh, lugged me squealing into birth. Great right, I'm Joyce. Uh, <laughs> when Stephen Dallas was born, creation from nothing. Um, Stephen the Dallas is has thought again. And then he, she's carrying the bag. What has she in the bag? He's thinking about this woman. What has she in the bag? A misbirth with a travelling neighbour called Cord. Chai's having, having a bit of fun here again. Is this what she has in the bag? Hushed in ruddy wool. It's hushed. It's asleep in ruddy wool. Dead, obviously. But, um, and then he's thinking, the cords of all link back, strand, winding cables of all flesh. He's thinking the cords of all, the cords of everybody. Uh, that was born, they all linked back. Strand, strand and twin cable of all fish. 
That is why mystic months. That is why mystic monks. I don't know what he means by that is why mystic months, but I'll give it some thought. Will you be as gods? Gaze in your omphalos, which is a cent the central point uh, omphalos. Um, omphalos, yes. The central point. Gaze in your omphalos, which is your basically your belly button. And he's thinking, hello, Kinch, which is him before he was born. Hello, Kinch here. And he's thinking, uh, somebody looked in to see him. He, hello, Kinch here. I'm here. Put me on to Edenville. Put me on to Edenville. Put me on to, like, Edenville. I want to go to, like, the Garden of Eden, you know. Ala Alpha, not, not, one. He's just thinking that in his mind. Next line. Spouse and helpmate of Adam Cadmon. Heave naked Eve. She had no navel. Gaze. Belly without blemish. Bulging big. A buckler of taut vellum. No white heaped corn. Orient and immortal. Standing from everlasting to everlasting. Womb of sin. Um, uh, next. Uh, spouse and helpmate of Adam. Cadmon. He's just thinking this. That's He's thinking. You know. That's all. Heave naked Eve. He's thinking about. You know. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. I Eve. She was naked in the Garden of Eden, obviously. So he's thinking, she had no navel. She had even no navel because uh, she was created. She had no navel, right? God created her. Uh, she wasn't born, I think, right? Gaze. She had no navel. Belly without blemish. No, there's no um, no navel. The belly without blemish. Bulging big. Um, you know, thinking about it, pregnant. A buckler of taut vellum. Um, a buckler of taut vellum. No white heaped corn. He says it reminds you of a, buck a buckler of taut vellum. He said, no, no, I wouldn't. It reminds you of white heaped corn. That's what a pregnant woman would remind you of. Orient and immortal. He's thinking about Eve. She was from the Orient. And immortal, right? Probably. Standing from everlasting to everlasting. Womb of sin. Um, that's kind of basically what that's all about. Now... There is, you know, some things here that I'm not going to completely get just on this reading, you know. Um, and that's one thing about reading Ulysses. People shouldn't get hung up on, you know, okay, you know, making a mistake. Okay, sh I didn't, you know, I misunderstood that line. And, you know, or even some words. You shouldn't get hung up. You should just continue reading, you know. Because you're never going to get everything Joyce is on about in, in the first reading or even the tenth reading or even the hundredth reading. Um, basically, uh, it's just not to get hung up on, you know, if, if you a couple of uh, phrases that you don't understand, you just continue on, you know. Um, that's kind of basically what that all means there. Next line, wombed in sin, darkness, I was too. That's what he's, he's just thinking, he's thinking all these things. Med, not begotten, he was med, he was med. By them, he was med, by a man and a woman. By them... The man with my voice and my eyes, and a ghost woman with ashes in her breath. By them, the man, he was, Stephen Nelson is thinking, I was made by the man with my voice and my eyes, which is his father, and a ghost woman with ashes on her breath, his mother who died. They clasped and sundered, they clasped and, and sundered, obviously making love. Did the couple's will, um, making love obviously. From before the ages, he willed me, and now may not will me away or ever. He willed me. I think he'd refer be referring to God here. He willed me to live probably. And now may not will me away or ever. Um, it's possible you could be thinking about God there. Could be his father. But I would think. I'd be more inclined to think God. Alex Eterna stays about him. Is that then the divine substance. Wherein father and son are consubstantial. Of one and the same substance basically. Um uh do 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 I lost where I was reading there now where was I at all at all at all at all as I say here in Ireland. Um do 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 do, do. Okay for um is that then the divine substance wherein father and son are cops and such But no basically here this is Stephen Dallas just he's thinking in his mind all the time. These are his thoughts that Jais has put completely on paper here. Where is poor areas? To try conclusions. Where is poor Arius? Now Arius was um now who would know who Arius was? You have to 
you obviously have to do a bit of research when you're doing the, uh, especially missing with Jace's work. Uh, Arius, he's a Christian priest at Alexandria, founder of Arianism, not the, uh, it's a different Arianism now to the popular Arianism, I think, or sh should I say unpopular, whatever. Um, not that a Christian priest in uh, come back a long time ago. Um, oh yeah, where is poor Arius to try conclusions? Warring his life long on the contra magnificent Jew banging Jew bang tantably Ilster Ilster Hersierk these words are some of these words uh, a leader uh, le that's a, is a leader in Hersey Hersierk in a Greek water closet he breathed his less euthanasia with bearded mitre and, and with crozer stole upon his throne widowed widow wid over of a widowed sea with unstifled arm um, with clotted hinder pairs. He's basically thinking about this uh, area here. Where is poor dears to try conclusions? Warring his life. You see what this uh, person called her is. Carter's been ill-stirred, her in a Greek water closet. He breathes his last. Oh, he must have died that way, I would say. With bearded mitre and crozier. Mitre is a bishop's hat, and a crozier is the staff, staff of a bishop, like the stick he holds, stalled upon his throne. Uh, but that's a good image from Jai's there again. Widower of a widower at sea, with unstifled, um, poor Orion, I can't pronounce that word, with clattered hinder pairs. Um, next line. Ears romped around him, nipping, nipping and eager ears. They are coming, waves, the white maned seahorses, champing, bride, bright wind bridle, the st steeds of Manahan. Now, Stephen Adonis has stopped thinking here now, and Joyce has, uh, Joyce has come in, uh, the writer, and he's saying, ears ramped around him. Joyce is saying, ears, you know, the sea ears ramped around him, nipping and ear, nipping, nipping, nipping and eager ears. That's a great way of Joyce describing nipping. Like the, it's like the ear nipping at his e ears and so on, nipping and eager ears. They are coming. They are coming, waves, I, I, the waves are coming in. The white maned seahorses. That's great writing on jazz again. Visualize the waves coming in, they're like white maned seahorses. Champing, they're champing, they're like, if you visualize a wave coming in with the white, they're like white maned seahorses. Champing and they're just, they're like charging in, champing. Bright wind, bright wind, bright wind bridled. <laughs> great, la great word from jazz. The steeds of of a Menahan. That's he's he's saying they're like that. The waves coming in. Um, um, I must and now. I mustn't forget his letter for the press and after the ship, half twelve. By the way, go easy with that money like a good young imbecile. Yes, I must. Now that uh, paragraph there, then three lines. This is Stephen Dallas thinking again. Now he's going back to thinking his mind. I mustn't forget his letter for the press. The letter that um, Mr. D.C. was at Gavin. I mustn't forget his letter for the press. The three thinking. And after the ship, the pub called the ship, which you, uh, the way it's been told to us so far, this ship uh, seems to be a pub. And after, you must go to the ship at half twelve to meet Mulligan and Haynes, I think. And then he's thinking, by the way, go easy with the money like a good young imbecile. Yes, I must. The money he got paid at the school. His pace slackened. Now, this is Jai's coming back in again, the writer. His pace slackened. Stephen Dallas, Stephen Dallas's pace slackened. His pace slackened. Here, here, am I going to Aunt Sally's, or sorry, am I going to Aunt Sarah's or not? My, consub my consubstantial father's wife. Did you see anything of your actress brother, Stephen, lately? No, sure, he's not down in... Stradsburg Terrace with Aunt Sally. Couldn't he fly a bit higher than that ear? And, 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 tell us, Stephen, how is Uncle C? Oh, weeping God, the things I married into. De buys up in de hayloft. The drunken little cost drawer and his brother, the cornet, the cornet player, highly respected gondolier, gondoliers, 
and school-eyed Walter, stirring his father, no less, sorry, stirring his father, no less, sir, yes, sir, no, sir, Jesus wept, and no wonder by Christ. <laughs> Um, just great writing from Jai Stir again. Uh, that uh, whole paragraph seems very, very confusing, but um, it's actually not that confusing at all, I don't think. Um, his pace slackened, so Stephen Dell's pace slackened, he slowed down. And then he's thinking, here, am I going to end Sarah's not? So obviously, the path leaving, leading to end Sarah's coming up, and he's, he's thinking about go, going to visit his aunt Sarah. Am I going to end Sarah's or not? My consubstantial father's vice. So this is obviously the person married to Aunt Sarah, which would be his uncle. Um, that's he's also thinking about him. Did you see anything of your artist brother Stephen lately? So right here, I think he's thinking about his uncle saying to him, and he's thinking about what his uncle uh, usually says to him when he goes to visit. Now his uncle usually says to him when he goes to visit. Did you see anything of your artist brother Stephen lately? Now Stephen else is thinking all this. Now he hadn't. Um, uh, let me read this first before I uh, uh, say something about this. Now, my cousin father, but uh, so this is usually what uh, S Stephen Dallas's uncle says to him. Did you see anything of your artist brother Stephen lately? No. Sure, he's sure he's not down in Stradbroke Terrace with with his aunt Sally, and this is Uncle still talking. Couldn't he fly a bit f higher than that, er? And 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 tell us, Stephen, how is Uncle C? Oh, weeping God, the things I married into de buys up in the hayloft. Um, this is Stephen that's just thinking all this. He's thinking about his uncle talking to him, basically, and these are the things the uncle says to him. The drunken little Castor and his brother, the cornet player, highly, highly respect, highly respectable gondoliers, highly respectable gondoliers. Um, now, probably what I'm th I would like to say here is, you would think here that Stephen has actually arrived at the house, and you would actually think by the dialogue here, you would think that his uncle is speaking to him. Did you see anything about it? But, but no, Stephen is just thinking all this here. Um, couldn't you fly a bit higher than that ear? And 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 tell us, Stephen. And tell us, Stephen. And tell us, Stephen. How is Uncle C? How is Uncle C? Um, this is Uncle still um speaking in Stephen's mind. Oh, weeping God, the things I married into. This is Uncle saying the things he married into. De buys up in the hayloft. I think that's him still talking in Stephen's mind, more or less. The drunken little Castor and his brother, the drunken little and his brother, the cornet player, highly respectful gondoliers, and school-eyed Walter serving his father. Now Stephen is now Stephen is still thinking here, and he says, and school-eyed Walter serving his father. Now school-eyed Walter is his uncle's son, which would be Stephen's first cousin, and school-eyed. He's he's got skew eyes. Um, He's got skew eyes, and he says, and skew eyed Walter, surring his father, and he calls his father sir all the time, surring his father, no less. Sir, yes sir, no sir. Now Stephen is thinking here, Jesus wept, and no wonder by Christ. <laughs> These people, I'm, he's, you know, he has his relations, uh, <laughs> actually more to say in there. Um, so this skew eyed Walter, uh, the son of this uncle, always says to his uncle, Yes, sir. No, sir. Basically, that's what that means. I pull the wheezy bell of their shuttered cottage and wait. They take me for a dun, peer out from a kind of vantage. It's Stephen, sir. Let him in. Let Stephen in. A bolt drawn back and water welcomes me. We thought you were someone else. In his broad bed, Uncle Richie, pillowed and blanketed, he stins over the hillcock of his knees, a sturdy forearm, clenched fist, he has washed the upper mire tree. Now, this is probably what's time to explain here now. It looks like he has actually arrived at this house, but in actual fact, I have read through this twice, he hasn't actually read through, uh, arrived at the house at all, I don't think. Um, he's still thinking in his mind, and he's still debating will he go there, like... 
Um, I, I he's thinking. I, I put when he gets there, this is what, what will happen. But he's still just thinking there. He hadn't got there yet. I pull the wheezy bell of their shuttered cottage and wait. They take me for a dun. They take me for a dun. I think that's short for dunce. They take me for a dunce, which is like I take me for a fool. Peer out from a kind of advantage corner. Um, a corner of a, a corner of to do of advantage. Um, uh, they take me for a dun, for a dunce. A dunce here is an Irish expression here for dunce. Kind of means a fool, stupid person. It's Stephen, sir. Um, now you would think he had actually arrived at the house, but this is Stephen still thinking. He's thinking about what the son would say. Now the son is Skewide. What's his name? Skewide. Uh, Walter would say to his father, it's Stephen, sir. And the f father, his uncle, would say, let him in, let Stephen in. A bolt drawn back and Walter welcomes me, which is his first column, the Skewide Walter. And this is Skewide Walter speaking. We thought you were someone else. Um, uh, in his broad bed, Uncle, Rich, Uncle Richie, pillowed and blanketed, extends over the hillcock of his knees, a sturdy forearm, clint fish, Clinch, sorry, clean chested. He's washed the upper mitre. Now, Stephen does this thing in here. In his broad bed, Unc Uncle Richie. Um, Uncle Richie. Um, Jai certainly gets you. Um, gets your. Um, your mind working, no doubt about that. Um, so the uncle seems to be called Richie. Um so obviously this Uncle Richie is could be bed bound in his broad bed. So if st when Stephen goes in there he sees Richard pillowed and blanketed. He's in the bed, extends over the hillcock of his knees. Now that's that's great writing from Joyce. Another example of why you can't rush Ulysses is the hillcock of his knees. Just think about his knees sticking up on the bed, the hillcock of his knees. They're like two hillcocks. A sturdy forearm, clean chested he has washed up a martin. And this now is the uncle saying, saying to him, Morrow, nephew. Yes, that's him speaking. He lays aside, he lays aside the lapboard whereon he drafts his bills of costs for the eyes of Master Goff and Master Shepland. Tandy, filing consents and common searches and a writ of juices to come, a bog oak frame over his bald head, wise requisite. The drone of his misleading whistle brings water back. So lapboard on the bed, you know, it's like visualize someone got breakfast in bed that have a little tray lapboard. He lays aside the lapboard, which is like the tray kind of whereupon he drafts his bills of costs. He's some job he obviously has some job, um drafts his bills of costs for the eyes of Master Goff and Master Shapland. Tandy filing consents, whoever files consent is he a liar or something on the lines and common searches and a writ of this is the job he has. A bog oak frame over his bald head, a bog oak frame, a, there's a picture over his head uh, on the wall. Why is requisite? The drone of his misleading whistle brings water back. So th when, th when the uncle whistle, it brings his uh, skew eyed water back to him. And here we are. Yes, sir. This is skew eyed water sent him when he, when he whistled. Yes, sir. Um, Malt for Richard and Stephen. Tell mother where is she? This is the uncle speaking now. Uncle, this uncle Richie. Malt for Malt uh, Malt for Richard, Richie, which is himself, and Stephen. Tell mother Malt. G uh, get us some Malt whiskey. Where is she? Where is mother? Bathing Chrissy, sir. This is Skew Eyed Wa uh, Walter saying. Bathing Chrissy, which is obviously his sister. Um, Bathing Chrissy, the girl that have a daughter called Chrissy. Bathing Chrissy, sir. And then Peppa's little bed lump, lump of love. This is Stephen Dallas. Uh, has he's still thinking. This is all Stephen Dallas is thinking here now. Peppa's little bed lamp, lump of love. This is what he's thinking. Uh, no, Uncle Richie. Um, this is skew white uh, water still uh, speaking. But this is all happening in Stephen's mind. Call me Richie. Damn your little water. It lowers whiskey. Call me Richie. Um, this is Uncle Richie speaking here. Uh, Dimir Lithia water it lowers wh whiskey, which is which whiskey? Don't be I thought water. Don't be giving me water for the whiskey or something like that. Uncle Richie really, 
Um, oh no, sorry. Let me go back to our line. Papa's little bedlam, lump of love. No Uncle Richie. So Stephen Glass has said would has said to s um, has said to Uncle Richie, no Uncle, Richie, I don't want any whiskey. And Uncle Richie has said to him, call me Richie. Damn you, little water, roars whiskey. He's damn you. And so obviously, school-eyed Walter has probably given him water. And he said, get away with that water. It lowers whiskey. It's you know dilutes. It's no good for whiskey. I want it straight. Uncle Richard, Uncle Richard, really. Um, that's even s either Stephen Glass said that, um, or uh, I think uh, sit down or by the law, Harry, I'll knock you down. Uh, sit down or by the law, Harry, I'll knock you down. This is Uncle Richie has said this. I think to screw eyed Walter, sit down or by the law, I'll knock you down. I think Walter squints vainly for a cheer. Oh no, he's probably said to Stephen Dallas. Uh, this, but this is all thoughts now happening in his mind. Walter squints vainly for a cheer. He has nothing to sit down on, sir. This is good at Walter's. Uh, saying, he has nowhere to put it, you mug. He has nowhere to put it. Um, which would mean the whiskey they got, possibly. Bring in our Chippingdale chair. Would you like a bite of something? None of your damned law de daw air here. The rich of a rasher fried with a herring. Sure, so much the better. We have nothing in the house but Becky pills. So I'm gonna read over that paragraph again. This is uh, Uncle Richie saying, he has nowhere to put it. Probably the whiskey, you mug. He's calling his school eyed water, you mug, you fool, you kind of. Bring in our Chippendale chair. B bring in that Chippendale chair for him. And then he said to Stephen, would you like a bite of something? None of your damned lawdy daw ear here. Snobber years, he's more or less saying. The rich of a rasher, fried with a herring. That's all we can offer you. Sure, so much the better. We have nothing in the house but backache pills. Al Erta, he drones bear bearers of Ferrandos Aria de Sartita, the grandest number, the grandest number, Stephen, in the whole opera. Listen. Um, he drones bears. This is like an, some. Uh, a he drones bears a friend us. Uh, this is an opera or something. Uh, Stephen Dallas is thinking he drones. So his uncle, you know, drones these bears from this opera. The grandest number, Stephen. Uh, this is uh, Uncle Richie uh, saying, saying uh, Stephen, listen to this. You know, this is the grandest number, Stephen, in the whole opera. Listen. His tuneful whistle sounds again, finely shaded with rushes of the year. His fist big drumming on his padded knees when he gets excited as he's singing he does this this wind is sweeter now right here this wind is sweeter now right here all this uh, there is that i was uh, on about here was all happening in stephen Dallas's mind he hadn't actually went to the house at all and and then he breaks out of, th of all that line that line of thought he says the wind is this wind is sweeter this wind is sweeter here by the um by the seaside he's saying no i'm not going to go to that house this wind is sweeter this wind wind here is sweeter where i am by the sea is sweeter now he starts thinking again houses of decay mine his and all you told the clan gowns gentry you had an uncle a judge and an uncle a general in the army come out of them come out of them stephen beauty is not there nor in the stagnant bay at marshall's lab library where you read the fading prophecies of joachim abbas for whom the hun hundred headed rebel of the catholic close now this is Stephen that is still thinking here and he says houses of decay he's thinking about his uncle's house it's like a decaying house and he's just thinking here he's thinking in general about houses of decay mine his and all and then he's thinking you told the clown gowns gentry when he was he's thinking he was thinking when he's young the clown clown gowns gentry which is the gentry like um the English at that time, you know, the gentry in, you know, the landlord's houses and so on. You so he obviously must have worked in these clan gowns in this um house or around the vicinity or something along them lines. And he's thinking here, you told the clown he's thinking, I told the clan gowns gentry that I you had an uncle, that I had an uncle he told him when he was young, he had an uncle who was a judge and an uncle 
who were the general in the army. Come out of them, Stephen. Um, now he's taken here. Come out of them, Stephen. What is uh, uh, come out of them, Stephen? He he's thinking to himself. Come out of them. Come out of them thoughts, Stephen. Beauty is not there. I I must stop thinking these thoughts that I'm thinking right here. Now there's no beauty in there. There's no beauty in these thoughts. Come out of them, Stephen. Beauty is not there. Um, they're not pleasant thoughts, more or less. N nor in the stagnant bay, uh, nor in the stagnant bay of Marshall's library, where you read the fading prophecies of Joachim Abbas. Nor, um, nor in the stagnant bay, nor in the stagnant bay of Marshall's library, where you read the fading prophecies of Joachim Abbas. Um, there's no, them are not pleasant thoughts, basically. Um, and I understand B of Marshall where you read he's think when he's uh, when he's young again. Nor understand B of Marshall's library where you read the f even in this library where you read the fading prophecies, fading prophecies, great fading, great line, great uh, uh, word from Joyce used there, fading prophecies. The book is getting old. Of Joachim Abbas, for whom the hundred the hundred headed rebel of the Catholic close. Uh, Rebel, uh, the rebel, you know, the people, uh, you know, disorderly crowd, I think, mob, the rebel, of the cat, uh, a hater of his kind, a hater of his kind ran, ran, ran from them to the wood of madness, his mane foaming in the moon, in the moon, his eyeballs, stares, how, ahem, <laughs> This is a misspelled word from Joyce, which Joyce likes to do a lot of. He just completely misspelled words for the crack, as they say in Ireland, which means the fun. Horse, horse, nose twelled, the oval equine faces, Temple, Buck Mulligan, Foxy Campbell, Lantern Jaws. Abbas' father, Furious Dean, what offence laid fire to their brains? Paf, Decente, Calv, Ut, Ni, in them, um, um, de Calvaris, a garland of grey hair on his commonalitous head. S see him, me, clambering down to the foot pace, descente, clutching a monstrance, basal eyed, is basal eyed? Get down, bold, pull, a chire gives back menace an echo, assisting about the altar's horns, the snorted. Latin of Jack Priest, moving burly in the rebels, tonsured and isled, and gelded, fat with the fat of kidneys of wheat. <coughs> um, so I just want to take a drink of tea. So now, just going back on that there. Um. um I suppose this is why we have Joyce connoisseurs because now that seems very confusing, but um, and no doubt when Joyce wrote this, he was obviously I think Joyce was left his head off most of the time as he's writing this because when Joyce had finished Ulysses, he he said he said um, he said I have written a book. It first of all it took Joyce seven years to write Ulysses. Um, and you know, you can easily see why it took him seven years. Because I mean, there's really is and truly there's some pages in Ulysses here that um, I have said before, and I will gladly say it again that there's some pages here in Ulysses. Um, you could take some uh, writer, any, s uh, you know, you you could take some writers' complete works of twenty books and pick out the best lines from them twenty books, and condense them into one page and their best bits of writing and so on and so forth and there's some pages here in Ulysses that I would take any day of the week ahead of uh, the other condensed page um, um, and you know I feel strongly about that uh, I just think Joyce was such a brilliant writer um, so just reading that again where do we read now um, Okay, houses of the game, mine, his, and all. Oh yeah, so it took Joyce seven years to write Ulysses, and he said when he wrote, he said, 
that he'd written a book that would keep the professors guessing for years. Um, I'm not sure, I don't think the professors are guessing uh, anymore. Uh, most of them are not, I don't think. But um, is it worth the the effort and the time you put into reading Ulysses? Absolutely it is. Um, it, 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 without a doubt it is, because it's just, uh, you know, it's w it is worth the effort, without a doubt. So, um, or oh where are you at at all? Nor in the stagnant bay. Where are the fading prophecies of the hundred headed rabble of the Catholic clause? Um, now he's still thinking here. Nor in the stagnant bay of mercy, where you read the fading prophecies of Joachim Abbas. For whom? Who did he read? Nor in the stagnant bay of mercy, where you read the fading prophecies. For whom? For whom? So, in Mercia's library. So I think we we figured out before that he was an author by uh, in the Catholic Church, which is you know basically you know, a boy that helps out with helps the priest during mass. Now in the same bit where you read the fading prophecies, which he, so he could have been reading books, uh, you know something from the by or uh, he could have been reading like a holy book or something at some kind of a religious thing. For whom the hundred head rebel of the Catholic clause for you know the people listening I could be referring to it when he was an author by that's possible and then he said a hater of his a hater of his kind ran from them to the wood of madness a hater of his kind a hater of his kind ran from them to the wood of madness his mane foaming in the moon his eyeballs stares his eyeballs stares horse nail trilled um i don't fully understand that to be honest um he could be it's it is kind of possible here that he could be could he be referring to the devil or of you know a, you know the evil spirits a hater of his kind ran from them to the wood of madness his mane foaming in the moon when he was cast down to earth possibly uh, his eyeballs stares it could be possible that, or it could be somebody that left the Catholic horse, um, horse trilled the, the oval equine faces. Now he's thinking about uh, horses in general. The oval equine faces. Then he's thinking Temple Buck Mulligan, Foxy Campbell, Lantern Jaws. Temple, um, I think we refer to for Temple was a bear in Dublin. No, Temple could actually. That's what Jice was kind of uh, the path he was sending us down when he read about before. But you know, um, it's it's not. Um, it wouldn't be strange if Jai sent us down a certain path and actually reversed uh, further on. So it, there could be a person called Temple too. Temple, he's got a you know a long face. Buck Mulligan has long long face. Foxy Campbell got long face. Lantern jaws. Some of a long face. It looks like it's like they're like lantern jaws. Great way from Jai's. Abbas father, furious dean. Abbas father, furious dean. What offence laid? fire to their brains he's on about some renegades some person that left uh the catholic church of god in general uh a garland of gray hair on his common nature to threaten with divine punishment common nature. now he's thinking back to that priest that shot up from the water a garland of now a garland of gray hair on his head see me see see him me clambering down the footpace now he's thinking back to that whole incident with the priest coming up out of the water basil cared get down ball paul um he's thinking about that person that's basically what's going on there get down ball paul uh yes the pre that priest was bald a a choir a choir giving back menace and echo now he's thinking about in during mass in this ca in a Catholic church, a choir gives back menace. If there's a choir behind the priest and so on and the altar and all that, a choir gives back menace and echo, assisting about the altar's horns. <laughs> Jesus is having a bit of fun here with the Catholic church. Assisting about now, visualize an altar in a church, and he's he's thinking, if the altar has horns, a horn on each side of the altar, the snorted Latin of Jack Priest, and he's 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 thinking about the pre uh the priest speaking latin he's kind of thinking of them like 
like bulls in 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 um in in um you know like in a spanish a uh, bullfight object priests moving burly in their elves moving burly like you know kind of heavy set uh priest he's thinking about um I should look up a word here now moving in their uh okay uh where is that word at all oh yeah no in their elves in their elves now elves is a white vestment reaching to the feet worn by clergy so they're moving barley they're heavy set in their elves tonsured and oiled tonsured and oiled uh, the act of sh shaving the head part of the head as the preliminary to becoming a priest that's what that means tonsured i think Iled and gelded, Iled, <laughs> Jace is that poking fun at the priest here. And gelded, you know, what kind of gold trimmings. Uh, fat with the fat of kidneys of wheat. So, they're fat with the fat of kidneys. The fat with the fat of kidneys of wheat. That's great, right, from Jace. Uh, the fat of kidneys of wheat. Um, fat with the fat of kidneys of wheat. Visualize a chicken. Or... Uh, turkey or something like that, uh, kidneys of wheat. So they're fat with the fat of kidneys of wheat. Um, you know, they eat kidneys too, I think. You know, some people do eat kidneys and, you know, the inner organs of, you know, chickens and hens and f uh, turkeys and whatnot. So he's more saying the priests are fed, they're fat from eating kidneys of wheat. So these, um, they're obviously chickens or whatnot because they eat wheat. So that means that's great writing, Joyce. Um, basically that, uh, that whole paragraph I read there is, um, um, just, um, Stephen Dallas thinking all that, and he's thinking about, you know, he's thinking about, um, you know, the priests and mass and all that, and he's thinking that they kind of look like, you know, he's also thinking about Spanish bullfighting and all that, and that's, he's, Joyce is having a bit of fun there with the, <laughs> the priest. Well, I don't think he'd like that much. Um, that's what all that's going on there. Now, next line. And at the same instant, perhaps the priest around the corner is is elevating it. And at the same instant, perhaps the priest around the corner is elevating it. Um, dring, dring, and two streets off, another locking it into a pix. Dring, dring, and in the Lady Chapel, another taking counsel all to his own cheek, dring dring, down, up, forward, back, Dan Ockham thought of that invincible doctor, a misty England, English morning, the imp hypothesis tickled his brain, bringing his horse down and kneeling, he heard twine with his second bell, the first bell in the transept, he is lifting his and rising, heard, now I am lifting these two bells, he is kneeling, twang in dip a trunk now let me read that back in all that's gone here is Stephen Dallas is still thinking he's thinking at the same time at the same instant perhaps a priest around the corner is elevating it elevating it is the host that they use in Catholic Mass which is Holy Communion that people take um, which is you know in a spiritual sense it's the body and blood of Jesus Christ um, so that's what he, and the priest elevates it during Mass, and at the same time, perhaps the priest around the corner is elevating it, lifting up the host during Mass, ring, ring. But Jice was also put in a kind of a sexual uh, reference here. And at the same time, instant, perhaps a priest around the corner is elevating it. You just got to think about it. And there's no doubt this is what Jice kind of meant as well. Ring, ring, and two streets off, another locking it into a pix. Uh, lucky because when these holy c are the holy communions, when they're finished, uh, they lock it into like a small, um, into a small, uh, um, like a small. Uh, it's called a pix. Is it pix? It's a container in which the consecrated bread of the Eucharist is kept. Um, yeah, and the, uh, they just lock it away with a little key and all that. I know that because. Um, um, I do attend mass, attend mass every a mass, uh, Catholic mass every Sunday, and I know that from attending mass. Um, 
and two streets off another locking it in a pex a drink drink and in a lady chapel another taking counsel all to his own cheek drink drink um that's what he's thinking there drink drink down up forward back down up people kneel down to take holy communion they get up forward they go forward they go back then Occam thought of that invincible doctor. So there was some person called Dan Occam thought of that. Um, um, would, if we knew more about Dan Occam, we'd be able to figure out these next few lines. Um, thought of that invincible doctor, a misty England morning. Uh, so a misty English morning, the imp, uh, the imp, the devilish hypothesis, tickled his brain. So um, just Dan Ackham could possibly have been, you know, a devout uh, follower of God, and then he was a misdemeanor that tickled his brain, you know, he went against God. I would think that could be what's being referred to there. Bringing his host down and kneeling, bringing his host down and kneeling, he heard twine with his second bell, the first bell in the transept, he is lifting his and rising. Heard now I'm lifting there are two bells he's kneeling twang and dip a tong. Um so Stephen Dallas is still thinking here, team about this guy called Dan Ockham. So if we knew more more about him we'd be able to figure out these few lines. But it's it's really not that uh you know, essential, you know. Um bringing his host down. So he, he if he done something with the host, uh could be mocking it in some way. And kneeling, he heard twine with his second bell, the first bell in the transept. I ca I can't figure out these three lines, but um, I need more time um, to actually go into it in more detail. And if I knew about this deck, I, I come and what he'd done, um, this would be easy enough to figure out, you know. Uh, next line, cousin Stephen, you will never be a saint. I love saints. You were awful. Awfully holy, weren't you? You prayed to the Blessed Virgin that you might not have a red nose. You prayed to the devil in Sepitine Avenue that the Fusby widow in front might lift her clothes. Still more from the wet street, O oh, C. Certo, sell your soul for that. Do dried rags pinned round a squaw. More tell me, more still, on the top of the whole tram, alone, crying to the rain, naked woman, what about that er? Um now let me st just think for a second here now cousin Stephen now Stephen is still thinking here uh, and he's thinking about his uncle saying to him cousin Stephen you will never be a saint Isle of Saints Isle of Saints which he's thinking of Ireland I think Isle, Isle of Saints you were awfully holy now he's still thinking about his uncle saying to him you were awfully holy weren't you you prayed to the blessed virgin that you might not have a red nose or he could just be thinking himself yeah i i yeah you pray i yeah i i did pray to the best word that i might not have a red nose you pr you pray to the devil in serpentine avenue that the full be widow that the full be wid widow that the full be widow um the full be widow that word full be what does that i know it means uh kind of heavy set i think uh yeah fat and squat that the fuzzy widow in front uh when he was in f wherever he was uh, some uh, fuzzy widow in front, front of him might lift her clothes might lift her clothes still more from the wet street okay he's walking on the street and this is kind of a fuzzy widow in front he was he was he prayed when he was young once that she might lift her clothes still more from the wet street and uh, that he might see more of her beauty obviously O C Certo, sell your soul for that. O C Certo, he's still thinking. Oh, sell your soul for that. Do. Dyed rags pinned round a squaw. Isn't he thinking about this uh, full be widow? Her dyed rags, they were wet from the rain. They looked like dyed rags pinned round a squaw. That's what she looked like. More, tell me. More still. Uh, he's still thinking his mind. More, well, tell me more. Uh, that's what he's going on there. And then he's thinking, on the top of the whole tram, alone, crying in the rain. So once when he was on, on the top of the whole tram, alone, crying in the rain, he saw a naked woman. Um, maybe some woman that was um, maybe mentally disturbed or something like that. Um, what about that? Er, 
what is these are all thoughts he's taken next line what about what what else were the inventors for <laughs> women women would like to hear this what about that he's thinking what else were the inventor for? what else were women invented for that's basically what Joyce is saying here great humor from Joyce again so that's what he said what else were women invented for um um <laughs> next line reading two pages a piece of seven books every night er i was young you bow to yourself in the mirror stepping forward to applause earnestly striking face hooray for the goddamned egypt er no one saw tell no one books you were going to write with letters for titles have you read his f oh yes but i prefer q yes but w is wonderful oh yes w remember your Epihenes on green oval leaves, deeply deep copies to be sent if you die to all the great libraries of the world, including Alexandria. Someone wants to read them after them after a thousand years. Mahavantara, Pico della Mer and Dola, like I, very like a whale. When one reads these strange pages of one long gone, one feels that one is at one with the one. Who wants? Now read that back again. Stephen Adams is still thinking here. And he's thinking he's thinking when he was younger, reading he used to read two pages a piece of seven books every night. When he was very young, he used to read two pages of seven books every night. Er I was young. And he's still thinking. You bow to your he's thinking when he was young, yes, I you bow to yourself in the mirror. He used to bow to himself when he used to look in the mirror, stepping forward to applause. He used to step forward to the mirror. Uh, stepping forward to applause, striking face. He's thinking, yes, I had a striking face. It was good looking, whatever. Hurry for the goddamned Egypt. Er, no one saw, no one saw. There was nobody there. Tell no one. And then he's thinking, books you were going to write. These were when he was young. These were books he was going to write with letters for titles. And the books he wrote, he was going. To, the names of the books were he were just <laughs> books you were going to write with letters for titles. Um, books you were going to write with letters for titles. Uh, so the name of the books was going to is going to was going to be letters. That's basically that means. Uh, books you were going to write with letters for titles. Have you read his first book? Would be called. Have you read his F? The name of the book would be called F. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. Chase the humor here. Oh yes, but I prefer Q. But I prefer the book called Q. Yes, but W is wonderful. The book called W is wonderful. Oh, yes. W, remember your FFNs. Um, it comes from FFNA. Remember your FFNs on green oval leaves that the book is going to write. Deeply deep copies to be sent. And now, when he was young, he, s he had requested... The copies of all these books were to be sent, if he died, to all the great libraries of the world, including Alexandria. So he was obviously a very young kid. Someone was to read them after, and he requested that someone was to read them there after a few thousand years. Uh, Mehemantara, me Pico della Merandola, like I, very like a whale. When one reads these strange pages of one long gone one feels one feels that one is at one with one who wants that's what he's thinking a bit of humor there again next line the grainy sand had gone from under his feet now now we're broken away from uh stephen Dell's thoughts which i think this is what people refer to when they say joyce's the streamline of consciousness uh, which I uh, I think are the thoughts put on paper b of, of the person. So now he's broke away from the thoughts and Joyce, is, Joyce the writer has entered again. The grainy sand had gone from under his feet. So the grainy sand that was under Stephen is, is, is gone. His boots trod again a damp crackling mast. Razor shells, squeaking pebbles. Now, let me read that again, because this is, is this great imagery from Joyce Turkin. That he saw Stephen Dallas was walking on grainy sand, and it, the, the grainy sand had finished. So now he was, he, he had, his boots trod again a damp, crackling mess, like 
shells and thicker sand or whatever. He's boost trotting in a damp, damp uh, from the from the w from the water, crackling mast, razor shells, squeaking pebbles. Uh, you can nearly uh, hear the sound of them. This is what he's walking on now. That on the unnumbered pebbles beats. Um, wood sheathed by the shipworm, lost armada, unwholesome sand flats, waiting to be waiting to suck his treading soles, breathing upward sewage breath. He coasted them, walking wearily. A porter bottle stood up, stodged to his waist in the cakey sando. A sentinel, isle of dreadful thirst, broken hoops, broken hoops on the shore, at the land, a maze of dark cunning nets. Farther away, chalk scrawled back doors, and on the higher beach, a drying line with two crucified shirts. Rings in wigwams of brown steedsmen and master mariners' human shells. Now, this is a perfect. This is a perfect example here of uh, what I refer to uh, the complete genius of Joyce with all his uh, and. There is so m so much brilliant writing now on these seven or eight lines. It's it's just incredible. Um, I mean, and to have the mo when you when I when I when people actually understand what Joyce is talking about, these lines really really become alive, and people will really get an I idea of the genius of Joyce. Um, so I'd like to re uh, lead uh, listeners through this now, and you just gotta visualize here. The grainy sand had gone from under his feet. So Stephen Ellis is walking along, you know, you know, kind of fine sand and all that. His boots trod again, so now it had come on to like shells and so on and so forth. Razor shells, squeaking pebbles, that on the that on the unnumbered pebbles beats uh let me just read that a second now. That on the unnumbered pebbles beats Wood see wood sheathed by the shipworm. Now, um, wood sheathed sheathed by the shipworm. Sheathed is like if you you know if if you if you kind of how would I explain sheathed is. Uh, I know if I'm working in construction, um, if you had like sand and you wanted to make the sand finer, you would. You know, you'd move it through like a, you know, uh, a thing that would separate the smaller, you know, make it uh, what they call a sieve, um, which is basically like, um, um <laughs> what the hell in the hell would I describe this at all? It's, if you had like um, a sieve, if you want to, finer sand and you wanted the thicker sand separated you use what you call a, sh a sieve which is like a metal uh, kind of a grid thing and you shake it and the finer sand will fall through it so what Joyce is saying here is these pebbles and so on are like they're like wood sieved by the shipworm just imagine just imagine the worms in a ship right um just imagine a ship at the bottom of the ocean and the worms that would eat it. And when they'd eat that wood, and when that wood would uh, pass through them, <laughs> it would end up on the floor and lost their meta, which is, you know, and they would all eventually wash up on the beach. And he's more or less saying that that's, uh, that's possibly what this uh, kind of sand could be, more or less unwholesome sand flats waited now unwholesome sand flats waited to suck his treading soles so Joyce is saying Stephen does walking along uh, visualize walking along the beach and when you walk along then it fills up with water unwholesome sand flats waited to suck his treading soles the water is like <laughs> wants to suck his the soles for the his, his, his foot pants a porter bottle stood up, a porter bottle, which is basically a bottle, which is like porter, which is like a bottle of Guinness, uh, more or less. A porter bottle, just imagine a bottle stuck up, 
stodged to his waist is stuck in the sand. A porta bottle is stood up, stodged to his waist in the cakey sand dough. In the cakey sand dough. Just imagine um, by the sea. Uh, that's the way. You, that's the perfect way to describe that. It's like a sentinel, like a sentinel, which is like a s kind of a soldier. You know, a soldier waiting outside. Um, uh, building security, a sentinel. That's what I'll remind you of. I love that. I love dreadful trust. Um, now broken hoops on the shore. Broken hoops on the shore. There's broken hoops washed up on the shore. At the land, a maze of dark cunning nets. Great writing, Jay. At the land. So further, looking in the distance, there's a maze, a maze of dark cunning nets. Why do the Jays call them cunning nets? Well, they're cunning nets because, like, they cut, they're crafty, they catch fish. Cunning nets. Farther away, chalk, chalk scrolled back doors. So further in the distance, if you look, you see chalk scrolled back door, like just doors washed up uh, with chalk, uh, chalk scrolled. Probably kids uh, would have scrolled them, with, uh, drawn on them with chalk. Uh, further away, chalk scrolled. Further away, chalk scrawled back doors. Um, or there could be just you know, doors of house in the distance. They're scrawled with chalk by kids. And on the higher beach, and on the higher beach, a drying line with two crucified shirts. So a line, you know, a clothes line, um, with clothes hanging at it, with two crucified shirts. Uh, visualize two shirts hanging on the line, and guys call them crucified shirts. Because, um, uh, you know, they're crucified, you know. <laughs> you don't have to be rocket science to figure that one out, but uh, just great writing from Jay's there. Rings end, wigwams of brown steersmen and master mariners, human shells. And further in the distance, which there's a place called Rings End, and wigwams of brown steersmen and master mariner, mariners, human shells. Now, visualize like uh, something like fishing boats. Um, Fishing boats, which we'll say, not fishing boats, you know, smaller boats with maybe a couple of people and with oars, and they don't have, they're not using the oars in the water, they have the oars, they have the oars up in the air, a uh, giant together. Wig, 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 wems of brown, st and they're steersmen, that's I think what they'll call them, and master mariners, and visualize if there were even four or six of them in the boat, and they have the oars, you know, up in the air, and they're together. Wig and they're like wigwams. They'd be like wigwams, wouldn't they? Be you know, like Indian wigwams. Uh, and brown human shells, and that also remind you of human shells. Uh, that's fantastic writing from Jace, of course. Um. Um. That was um. It was um. For. Joyce connoisseurs now, um, I hope they got all that. Um, next line. He halted. He halted, which is now Joyce is saying, Stephen and Elf halted, he stopped. I have passed away to Aunt Sarah's. I have passed away to Aunt Sarah's. Now I have to go back and just check something here. Um, yeah, yes, you see, this is, uh, this is why he halted I passed away to Aunt Sarah's. So yes, he didn't go to Aunt Sarah's. Now, but Joyce actually led us down the path. Uh, Joyce deliberately led the readers down the path to actually think that he did that he did go to his Aunt Sarah's. And because he put all the dialogue in there with his uncle and skew-eyed Walter and so on. And the whole conversation going on there. So you would actually think, yes, he did go to the house and there was conversations going on and so on. So here Joyce is... D and Joyce right here now is laughing at, at the readers again. He says, he halted. I have passed away to Aunt Sarah's. He's more or less saying, I think here he's saying, ha ha, Joyce is kind of laughing at us. No, no, he didn't go on to Aunt Sarah's. That was all thoughts. He was thinking. This is what would have been said if he did go to Aunt Because here he says, oh, this is, and this is totally deliberate from Joyce, of course. He halted. I have passed away to Aunt Sarah's. Am I not going there? Seems not. So he didn't go. Uh, and so even Stephen did that thinking, I'm not going there to visit them. Seems not. No one about. He turned northeast and crossed the firmer sand towards the pigeon house. So Stephen did not go to Aunt Sarah's. 
Uh, we, let me read that again. He halted a path away to Anseris. He didn't go there. Am I not going there? Seems not. No one about. He turned northeast and crossed the firmer sand towards the pigeon house. <coughs> now these are uh, these are lines of Latin or some other language. It doesn't really matter. Quest and I know I'm not even going to try and pronounce them. Quest le pigeon philosoph. Next line. Now Patrice, home unfurling, leapt warm milk mi with me in the bear, MacMahon, son of the wild goose, Kevin Egan of Paris, my father's a bird. He left the sweet lat child with pink young tongue, plump on his face, lap le pen. He hopes to win the grass lots. About the nature of woman he reads in Mish Halesh, but he must send me la vie de gis by M. Leo Taxel, Linda to his friend. Um, so what's basically gone on here is, I just want to check the time here now, okay, uh, I just want to finish this page and this should be this section done. Um, so this is Steve Nadella's thinking here, Petri's home, now this is a friend obviously of Steve Nadella's, so he's thinking about his friend Petri's home on Furling, Furlon. Um, I don't know what furling means in that context. I know it's, got, it's a distance in horse racing, but in the home on furling, lap milk with me in the bear McMahon. So, Patrice. Uh, maybe when he was very young, he had a friend called Patrice who lapped warm milk with him in a bear, in, in the bear McMahon, in a bear in a pub called McMahon. When they were young, they would lap milk, drank milk. Son of the wild goose, Kevin Egan of Paris. So this Patrice is the son of of a wild of the wild ghost Kevin Egan. He's son of the wild person uh called Kevin Egan of Paris from Paris. Uh so he's a he's a wild man, he's uh, the son of the wild ghost Kevin Egan of Paris. And then he thinks my father is a bird, my father's a bird, my father's a jail bird, so this Kevin Egan is probably a jail bird. He left the sweet lat chart with pink young tongue. He's thinking about Patrice. He left the sweet, le whatever that is, milk, so with pink young tongue. Um, uh, great imagery from Joyce there. Plump bunny, yes, there were kids. Plump bunny's face, yes, he was like he, he was like a plump bunny's face. He was like a, he, when they were little kids. And yes, his face was like a plump bunny's face. Lap le pen. He hopes to win the grass lots. Uh, he's thinking about this Patrice. He hopes to win the grass lots, whatever that is. He hopes to win the grass lots. It could be some kind of a race or something in France. About the nature, about the nature of women, he reads in Michelet. Um He's thinking about this Patrice. Uh, would probably advise him about women or something. But he must send me La Vie de Gis by Miss Emily Taxa, Lint to his friend. So he's thinking about this Patrice, he must send him this book called La Vie de Gis by Leo Taxa. Lint, but he didn't send it to me because he lent it to an another friend. Next, okay, this is French obviously here now. Uh, it is. Kess uh, turned down to voice. <laughs> My French. <laughs> I haven't a clue how to uh, pronounce French. But these four next four lines are French. Um, shush, he laps. He's Stephen Dallas is still thinking here, and he's thinking about this friend he had called Patrice when he was younger, who was the son of this Kevin Egan, who was a jailbird, uh, could be on the run in France or something like that. And then he's thinking, my Latin quarter hat. God, we simply must dress the character. I want puce gloves. You were a student, weren't you? Of what in the other devil's name? PC on, PC in, you know, physique. Uh, eating your growth worth of man u flesh pots of Egypt. Elbowed by belching cabmen. Just say in the most common tone. When I was in Paris, Bulbrick, I used to. Yes. Yes, used to carry punched tickets to prove an alibi if they arrested you for murder somewhere. Justice. On the night of the 17th of February, 1904, the prisoner was seen by two witnesses. Other fellow, fellow did it, other me. Hat, tie, overcoat, noose. <laughs> Lou, Keth, Moy, you seem to have enjoyed yourself. Uh, read, let me read that paragraph again. So basically, Stephen Dallas is thinking now. Now he's thinking about earlier in the book as when we read you know, when when uh, Book Mulligan gave me his Latin hat, my Latin quarter hat, remember he threw, he, 
he threw the hat. Um, you know, talking, you know, he threw, he flung the hat to him. My Latin quarter hat. And he th- he's thinking, God, we must simply dress the character. He's thinking about what Mul- Book Mulligan was saying. And he's thinking, I want puce gloves. Remember he said that? You were a student, weren't you? Um, of He's just thinking here. Of what in the other devil's name? PC on. PC in, you know, physique, from how that has. Uh, eating your... He's thinking about... He's just thinking here now. Um, to fully understand all this, you know. Um, he's just thinking thoughts here. Uh, if anybody really thinks... Uh, well, think this over, they should be able to figure it all out. I just want to look up uh, one word here now, a second. Um, do, 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 do. Is that a word? At all, at all, at all. Okay. Or okay. Um, all right. Um, so he's thinking, uh, uh, eating your growth for him. He's thinking, I, well, Stephen Giles, I think, was in Paris here. Or in France. And he's thinking about... Eating the French food, I think. Flesh pots of Egypt. Um, and he's thinking about flesh pots of Egypt. Flesh pots are places providing lu- luxurious or hedonistic living. Um, elbowed by Belching Cabman. Great Lime Joyce. Just seeing the most natural tone. When I was in Paris. Yes, he was in Paris. By Mitch. I used to. Use, yes, used to carry punch tickets to prove an alibi. Yes, he used to carry punch tickets to prove an alibi if they arrested you. Now he's thinking about somebody, you know, somebody that could be wanted for murder. Um, how he he's thinking about some person. Um, how he used to carry punch tickets. You know, visualize going into a cinema or something, and a person goes in and he gets a ticket and he punches it, and he comes out and he commits the murder, and then he can prove, oh shoot, I was in uh, watching the cinema for two hours or the movie or the film, um, that's basically what's gone there. Yes, he used to carry punch tickets to prove an alibi if they arrested you for murder somewhere. So he's thinking about some person used to do that. And just in general, he's thinking, just as he's thinking, on the night of the 17th of February, on the night of the 17th of February, the prisoner was seen by two witnesses. He's just thinking all that. But uh, I'm very relevant here is 1904. On the night of the 17th of February, 1904, which um, this could be when this book was written now. You know, this is the first hint that Joyce has given us. Now, I know exactly when the book was written, but I can't even think that way because, you know, as I said at the start, I want to figure this book out as just reading it for the first time. So this is a clue here. On the night of the 17th of February, 1904, uh, this is could be when this book was based on uh, th- that year. Um, um, or, you know, it could be set in that year. On the night of the 17th of February, um, he's well, Stephen Dallas is just thinking here, but uh, Joyce has given this clue about 1904. The prisoner was seen by two witnesses. He's thinking in general, the prisoner was seen by two witnesses. Other fellow did it. Other me. Yeah, so, <laughs> other fellow did it. Other me. It was the other person. It wasn't me. It was my other person. You know, that bit of humour from Jais. And then he's thinking, hat, tie, overcoat, noose. Look, sis, moi. You seem to enjoy yourself. Now he's thinking about, basically, a hangman. A hangman, we say a hangman is going, off, is going to hang somebody. And he, before he leaves his house, he thinks, this is what a hangman, w- hangman would be thinking. Hash, I need my hash, I need my tie, I need my overcoat. And then he's thinking, I need my noose. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Stephen Dallas is thinking here, if a hangman was leaving his house to go and hang somebody, he says, sh- oh yeah, where's my hash, where's my tie, oh, where's my overcoat, okay, and where's my noose? You seem to enjoy yourself. Uh, that's what's going on there. Proudly walking, next line, proudly walking, whom were you walking with? Forgot a dispossessed with another's, with mother's money order, eight shillings, the banging door of the post office slammed in your face by the usher, hunger, toothache, in court, just minutes, luck clock, musket, hired dog, shot him to bloody bits with a bang, shotgun, bits, men, splattered, walls, all brass buttons, bits of curaclack, place clack bang not hurt 
Oh, that's all right. Shake hands. See what I mean? Meant see. Oh, that's all right. Shake a shake. Oh, that's all. That's oh, that's all. Only all right. So it's still still that's still taken here. Uh, proudly walking. Whom were you trying to walk with? Forget. You think about this prisoner that was caught ho and things. You know that's all. Uh, whom were you walking with? Forgot with mothers. I know he's actually thinking about himself here. Proudly walking. Ho and he's thinking about whom was I walking with? Forget a uh, dispossessed. And he's thinking. Uh, he's walking with his mo with his mother's money order, eight shillings, which is monetary money. And he's thinking about the banging door of the post office slammed in your face by the usher. Uh, this happened when he was young. Hunger, toothache. He had a toothache after. In court, you have to look clock, must get. Look clock. Um, must get. Hire dog. So he could possibly see a clock in the distance. Look clock, must get. Um, hired the dog. Now he's thinking about a hired dog in general. A hired dog. A hired. Uh, in you know, if you wanted to like, murder or kill somebody, you get a hi you'd hire hire a dog. You'd hire a dog, shoot him to bloody bits with a bang shotgun. Dude, he's thinking all this. Bits men, bits men splattered walls, all brass buttons. Bits all Kirkadak in place, clang back, not hurt. Oh, that's all right. Shake hands. See what I meant. See. Oh, that's all. Right. Shake a shake. Oh, that's all. Only all right. Um, I just want to read this last paragraph. Um, they, they were just all thoughts he's thinking there. They come into his head. Uh, he was thinking about a murder and you know so on and so forth and various things just all thrown in there in the mix. Next line: You were going, you were going to do wonders. What Mit missionary to Europe after fiery Columbanus, Fikri and Ascotus, on their creepy stools in heaven, split from their pin pots. Loud Latin laughing, ooh ooh, pretending, pretending, pretending to speak, pretending to speak broken English as you dragged your valus porter tree piece across the slimy pier at New Haven. Comment: Rich booty you brought back, La Tuta, five tattered numbers of pantalon, blanche, ick, cola rush, a French tel, a French, a blue French telegram, curious, curious, curious. Curiosity to show mother dying, come home, father. Um. Now Stephen Dallas is still thinking here, and he's thinking when he was young. You were going to do y wonders when you were young. What? He was going to be a, become a missionary to Europe after fiery Columbanus, who was obviously some saint in the Catholic Church. He was going to become a priest like him when he was younger. Fikra and, Sco and Scotus on their creepy stools in heaven, split from their pinta. I don't know who them two uh, characters were. Um, um, loud Latin laughing, ooh, ooh. Uh, pretending to speak broken English as you dragged your valus, as you dragged your valus, um, a small traveling bag, um, porter tree apiece across the slimy pier. Comment rich booty you brought back. This is like when he was in France, basically, pretending. When he came back, he could have possibly been trying to pretend to speak broken English. And he dragged, yes, his bag. I, I, yeah, when he came back from Paris. At one stage, he was pretending to speak broken English as you dragged your valise, um, a small traveling bag, a suitcase. When he was traveling, his porter tree a piece, uh, or sorry, porter tree pence. He's thinking about this other time across the slimy pier at New Haven. Um, he's pretending probably to be a French person. Commenter, rich booty, which booty you brought back? Uh, he brought back this booty from France. Five tattered numbers of. Five tattered numbers of pantalon blanche et coule rouge. Uh, he brought back these numbers, these musical sheets of this whatever that is. A bl and he also brought back a blue French telegraph curiosity to show. And the telegraph read. Mother dying, come home, father. So he was. Now I was, I was to guess here. I would say Stephen Dallas was in France, and this is the telegram he received: "Mother dying, come home, father." So his father sent him a telegram: "Mother dying, come home, father." I'm sorry, "Mother dying, come home, father." The ang, 
thinks you killed your mother that's why she won't um so that's part of the reason he came home because his mother was dying and we know his mother died so y it's possible that Stephen Dallas was in France and that's the telegram he received um so that was I just want to leave this now for a, s a second I'm going back to it we got to one one two three four five uh six close on six pages there um but they were you know they were s they were pretty hectic uh, tough pages really you know um but I'm going to leave it right here and uh, now and for this uh section <laughs>